What's up guys, Devil Doll Gamer here, and the Weapons of Victory update is finally here. This update is huge. It finally adds all the things I, I've been waiting for for War Thunder for a while, and it adds a total of 40 new aircraft and tanks to this game. That is a fuck ton. I mean, the amount of stuff, like, I, I don't even know ha what half the new stuff is because I haven't been following it that much. It's just crazy. I'm actually moving, like, in the process of moving uh, my lease is up and I'm moving my house. So like I literally stopped to take a break from packing boxes and to record this video, of course, and at least do one round of, with each tank. Um, just cause I, that I, I was looking more forward to the tanks than the planes and, you know, just talk a little bit about this video. Cause a lot of you guys don't really keep up with this stuff and, you know, you use YouTube as a source of knowing what's new. So I figured, you know what, I might as well just do this video right before I go and then we'll really get in depth with the tanks after I get my internet hooked up. Fingers crossed, Comcast sucks making their appointments, so we'll make sure they get there. But anyways, tons of new stuff, tons of new stuff. The American tank tree finally gets its tank destroyers, which are awesome. And we're going to go over them first because they are fucking sweet. All right, first up, we have the T-28 prototype, which is a premium tank. I think it was around 6,000 Golden Eagles. Um, this thing is awesome. Boasts a 158mm gun, or not 158, 105mm gun. Penetration at zero degree angle at 10 meters with the APCR is 315 millimeters. That's ridiculous considering that this tank's battle rating is 6.7. Um, the round I actually played with this thing was against Tiger 1s. And just to give you an idea how crazy that is, look at the frontal armor on it. 305. No, no Tiger or even, you know, 5.0 BR anything is going to penetrate that. The problem, the hindrance of it, it's slow as dicks. This thing is very slow, it's hard to turn, and it's long. It has a nice, huge side target area, and the armor on the side is generally pretty weak, and the rear too. So basically, you have the frontal armor, and a, a thing I've noticed is the barrel. I mean, the barrel gets hit, and that's out of action, and you can't maneuver. So this thing's actually really cool worth it for the battle rating definitely if you feel like club and seals definitely check that one out the next one is the calipi the nice first you know mlrs system that we have for it which is awesome um this thing is actually nine thousand golden eagles about fifty dollars um now we're gonna get really in depth with this thing when i actually do like a video review of it the one round i did played it was mixed the rockets are definitely a force to be reckoned with um, they're, they can one hit almost anything. I've seen a lot of people say they can one hit the mouse in the test track. Um, you know, but we're actually going to test that right at the end. So we'll skip this and we'll come back and talk about it a little more. Then we got our first half track 75 mil, the M3. This thing's pretty cool. Tier one, definitely really awesome. 75 millimeter. Um, you know, we get some good, some good penetration at 90 millimeter penetration, 110 millimeter penetration. Pretty cool half track, you know, it's a half track though, so it's weak as shit when it gets hit. I mean, the armor on it is just non-existent. I mean, six millimeters. So don't get hit. <laughs> then we got the M10, which is awesome. Definitely pretty cool. Again, weak armor, sloped though, angled, not even 60 degree angle, so it's kind of pointless at that point. But, you know, good 70, 76 millimeter gun on it. Tier two, I mean, you can't you can't complain about it. But maneuverability, speed is the name of the game with these tank destroyers anyway, especially the American tank destroyers. And then we get to the M18 Hellcat, my favorite tank from this update. This thing is the epitome of the Ferrari fucking tanks. This thing is fast, maneuverable, boasts a nice 76 millimeter gun. Um, definitely awesome. You can get, I mean, the penetration with it 240 millimeters at you know 10 meters and with no you know straight on shot with the APCR awesome awesome tank I'm I, the one round I played with this I actually wrecked everyone I mean it's just ridiculously awesome armor on it again since it is a tank destroyer very very crap the barrels actually that's pretty cool um, you know it's just you, you got 25 millimeters at the mantle that's just pretty crazy um, it's one of these tanks you don't want to get hit in. Any of these TDs, minus the, the tortoises, you don't want to get hit in. Then we get the M36. This thing is another beastly tank destroyer, a 90 millimeter gun on it. That is crazy. At a battle rating 5.7. Oh, yeah, the uh, 4.7 for the Hellcat battle rating. So that puts it right around the Tiger 1s. 
you can, I mean, you'll get tighter ones or less with that thing, which is really cool. So you'll get a, get tiered against either, you know, either tier threes or tier twos. Sometimes you get up tiered to a tier four, but it doesn't matter. But anyways, the M36 90 millimeter gun, again, weak, weak, weak armor. Um, the slopes aren't even enough to really help. So, I mean, again, you really got to play these things kind of really mobility centered. Um, so, you know, we're going to definitely do some videos on these. Uh, I just wanted to show off this. Then, of course, we got the T95, which is the same thing as the T28, except it has dual tracks. Same gun, 105 millimeter, um, same penetration for the APCR and everything. Um, so there's really no change to it. Uh, the armor is actually pretty much the same also, except it's just got the dual tracks. Um, the only difference is this thing's battle rating is at 7.0. So you're getting put in with IS-4s and stuff, which, you know, it's very, very hard to play against IS-4s. And, you know, the heavily armored Tier 5 tanks with this thing, and it's just slow speed and slow turning. It's, it's really bad. I mean, you really have to sit off and you know, really sit off and engage things from a distance. But again, the frontal armor is your saving grace with those things. So as long as you keep your front towards it and your gun and your gun barrel intact, you should be all right. So that's no big deal. Okay, so then we're going to hop on over. The, the Germany got, I think, a few other aircraft. I'm not sure. I think the BF-109 won. But the big one was the Arado 234C3, the dual engine. I mean, look at this thing. Awesome. And it actually has teeth now, two 20 millimeter guns. This thing is pretty cool. I actually played one round with it. It's kind of nice to fly in a Rado that you can fight back with instead of running like a bitch every single time. This thing is pretty awesome. No armor protection. Go figure. <laughs> this thing's pretty cool. It's, it's nice to actually have. I like the bombers with guns so you can defend yourself. I mean, screw the tail guns. I want to be able to turn around and be like, let's go at this shit. So... You know, this thing's definitely pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to flying a lot of bomber missions with this thing. And it's actually pretty cool because of its battle rating of 6.7. You get put in a lot of Tier 4 matches with it. The one match I played was all Farquhar Wolf 190s and uh, Bearcats, which was pretty cool. So I didn't get chased down by any mix. That's awesome. Then off to the Soviets. The Soviets got a few things, including the Gaz AAA with the Quad Vickers, which is pretty cool. Um, nice little, you know, Tier 1. AA. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Then it has the T-34 STZ. I don't know what's much changed about this armor-wise. It looks pretty much exactly like a normal uh, T-34, minus the armament on it, which is pretty surprising. So you still have your 76mm gun, but you have APCR, heat, stuff like that. 135mm um, penetration for a Tier 2 tank. That's pretty badass. Can't beat that. So this thing's definitely pretty cool. One of the Russian tanks, I would definitely... I mean, it should be your new go-to Tier 2 T-34 because the T-34 1942 is just a terrible, terrible tank for that that um, battle rating. So this should be an actually pretty cool one when you actually unlock all the ammo for it. Then we have the killer, the SU-12254, which is actually an SU-122 built onto a T-54 chassis. This thing is nuts. This gun is just absolutely insane. 122 millimeter gun with Sabo rounds at 313 millimeters at 10 meters and heat rounds at 400 millimeters at 10 millimeters. Okay, this thing's nuts. And it has two 14.5 millimeter machine guns. These machine guns are the main gun of the BTR, the Russian, the modern BTR troop transport. That's the same gun that's on that swivel turret. This thing is nuts. These are anti-aircraft guns, pretty much. I mean, you could take out light armor anti-aircraft guns with this thing. Crazy. This thing is crazy. The armor for it, nothing really, you know, spectacular for it. But it can definitely, I mean, the effective thickness because of the slope is definitely pretty nice. I mean, it is a tier 5 tank. Um, it, I mean, this is a mouse killer. This is an everything killer with the heat rounds. If you use heat, you're going to kill everything with this thing. Really looking forward to doing some stuff with this and just taking stuff out at distance. It's going to be pretty cool. Then we got the IL-2-37. This thing boasts two 37mm guns on it. So now we have a, just a dedicated gun plane cast. I mean, it's going to be the A-10 of the Soviets. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's kind of nice how it's stacked. You know, you can do this cast aircraft just like you, you do with the Ju-87 with 
37 millimeters you can now do with the IL-2, which is pretty freaking cool. I think there was some more things that got added into here, but I just, I like I said, I, I haven't been paying it. I've been so busy moving, I haven't been able to pay attention to what they're putting in it, putting everything in. Um, so let's switch over to the British. The British got all of their carrier-based fighters. This is awesome. We got the Sea Hurricane. Well, here, we got a few of them. The Sea Fury. This thing is awesome. I think it has four 20 millimeter guns. Pretty awesome aircraft. C the Sea Fire with dual props and 20 millimeters. This thing is definitely pretty cool. I like the dual props. That's definitely pretty badass. The Sea Fly, another 20 millimeter guns. Um, I think that's actually a bomber. Bomber area. I don't know. Pretty cool though. It's, it's nice to see their, their uh, carrier race stuff. And then the Sea Fire, which is just even cooler. I mean, these things are just sleek, sexy bastards. We also got this sucker, 7.0. I mean, the attacker FB1, I'm not even sure what it is. Like, is that the actual name of it? Never heard of this thing before. But anyways, it's got four 20mm guns, max speed, 922 kilometers an hour. Um, this thing's pretty badass. Turn time, 25 seconds. You're not going to be taken out. Um, you're definitely not taken out. MiG 15s with this thing, but it's actually pretty cool to see you know the carrier based fighters in now. Definitely, definitely really cool. The Japanese also got a few things. The one of the cool things, the Ki 21 bomber. This was the main bomber for Japan during World War II, so it's actually nice to see this added in. It's a tier one quick unlock if you want to go get it done. It's definitely really, really cool. On top of that, we also got a few um, US aircraft. We got the P-51, just the normal one, with four 20mm uh, Hispanios, which is actually pretty cool. So that's that's a nice little Tier 3 aircraft to get. I mean, t you're kind of limited around, you know, with your 20 millimeters until around Tier 3. So that's actually another cool Tier 3 unlock that you can get. And the one that I'm really, really excited about is the AD-2, which is really, once I get out of here... The Sky Raider. That is right. This thing is awesome. This was the most successful cast aircraft of the Vietnam War. This thing was the last prop aircraft to be used in, well, not really, because the Bronco is still kind of used, but I mean, in a huge role, this was the last one that was to be used, and it is awesome. This thing boasts a huge array of ground attack weaponry. I mean, you got your... 12 127 millimeters you got one 2,000 pound bombs and two two 1,000 pound bombs I mean that's crazy and then you also have this a, a torpedo I mean it, you can get a freaking torpedo for it uh, two 298 millimeter rockets 12 127 millimeters you can also get two 298 rockets hold on two tiny Tim rockets which are the 298 millimeters 12 127 millimeters and one 2,000 pound bomb. That is just fucking nuts. I mean, just ridiculous. I actually want to see what that would actually look like. There. I, I kind of want to see what this would look like. What? I mean, just retarded. I mean, you could kill all kinds of stuff like this. And in a battle rating, 6.7. I mean, that's a pretty fair battle rating for it. I don't, I don't see much really happening with that. Um... You know, and we also got a bunch of new maps. Uh, let's see if we can go in here and kind of show off the new maps. Let's go to tank battles. Uh, Hurt again forest, which is a very awesome mix of just open ground terrain and you know built-in city. It's really awesome. Normandy. You, the D-Day beaches, it's very, very cool, very awesome map, I like it a lot, and then Berlin, come on now, I mean, it's it's starting to get really, really good, I'm getting, I'm really, I'm actually mad that I'm moving, because I just want to play this so bad, but anyways, let's talk about the Calipi, we're going to take this into the test drive, and we're going to check it out, and I'm kind of, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about it, and just kind of show you, I mean, it is a $50 tank, so I mean, and, the least I could do is show you just a little bit about, a little more about it, you know, just a little bit of it in action. Now this, of course, is just an M4, the standard M4. Shitty, shitty, shitty tank, especially if you're going to be going against Tier 3 stuff. Panzer 2C. Now, the only problem about this is, do you see how high that is? I mean, that's just a huge, huge target right there. So let's go ahead and we're going to engage this. 
Still alive. Still alive. I mean, the accuracy for it, just because of the spread. Oh no, I guess we killed it. Okay, there's a panther at distance. We're gonna hit the panther at distance. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Just not. <laughs> it's very hard to aim. So, I mean, it's very hard to aim, but it's, it definitely adds a new gameplay to it. I like how when you, when you actually use the rockets, they leave the tube. So you got 60 of them, you got the counter up on the top left. I mean, it's actually pretty cool. Just gonna go ahead and shoot that Panzer too. Screw him. I mean, the Panther, we wouldn't really do much against him in this tank. So, it's actually... And when you actually play this, the Calipi, you're probably going to be facing a lot of Panthers. So let's take some shots at it and see what happens. Really? I can't even hit him? Are you even close? I'm not even close to him. I mean, the range is just... Ugh. I'm, like, so short. There we go. Nope. Just a little high. Oh, that was a one shot. So I one shot at a panther, but it took me two shots to hit a panther too. Oh, there's a mouse up there. Let's go see what we can do against the mouse. Totally forgot they added that in here. We got 37 rockets left. Okay, let's see what we can do to it frontal wise. Not even get close. I've heard people say it can one shot a mouse. We'll see. I'm definitely hitting the mouse and ain't shit happening to it. Guess I'm just waiting for that lucky rocket. I mean, it's very hard to aim at distance. It's very hard to aim. And I mean, you're in, it's a gla it's got a glass jaw. I mean, what it's attached to, tank-wise, isn't really the best. Fuck your tree. We're definitely gonna go really in-depth. I wanna make a very in-depth video of this, after this move, and really talk about it, get a lot of gameplay in on it, and uh, really see if it's really worth the $50. I mean, I would suggest not spending your money on it, and just waiting, we'll, I'll do like a really in-depth video, test a lot of different armor on it, and, See if it's really worth it. I mean, fifty dollars is a lot for a tank. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do shit to this mouse with this gun. Yeah. Oh. It just ate my shell. Okay, so let's give this a shot again. Yeah, that was a direct hit. Nothing. Wow. Okay, never mind. Totally killed that thing. That's pretty surprising. Well, let's see how fast we can ripple the last 26 off. I mean, if you wanted to, you really could just ripple the shit out of this. Or let's just do this. You could use it as arty, but you ain't really aiming it all the way over there. That's crazy. That's crazy. We're gonna do some in-depth videos on it, but definitely check it out. Check it out. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten on War Thunder in a while, get it, download it, start grinding it out, get some of those tank destroyers unlocked. We're gonna do a lot of videos, so I'll, I'll kind of let you guys give you the lowdown on each one uh, once I get done with this move. Uh, if you don't have War Thunder, I have a download just a link in the description below. Download it, check it out. Every Monday I play it with my uh, fans on uh, Twitch, so it's definitely a really awesome game. I'm glad the tank destroyers are in. They're adding more cool stuff every day, and I just, I'm just i liking the updates. They're adding a lot more shit than usual, which is really, really awesome. So Gaijin's definitely stepping up their game.
If you want to see more War Thunder, let me know in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.